What's going on, everybody, and happy holidays, because you know this is coming out either on Christmas Day or Christmas Eve, guys. With all the stuff that's been going on, it's been a crazy heck of a holiday, and I wish you guys all the best. But let's get down to business. As you saw in the thumbnail, you know what time it is. It's time for me to review Bumblebee, the latest in the streak of Transformers films. And this time, we're getting a lovely soft reboot. And guys, before I get into any specifics, this is the film that we have wanted as G1 fans since... The beginning. You know, all the things that we went through with the Bayformers, even if you did like it, I like them for the most part, understanding with one basic principle that these are not the Transformers that I grew up with, and nor would they ever be. But, having seen this film, there is hope on the horizon. And guys, before I get into it, I'm going to touch on some light spoilers, so if you have not seen the film, you've been warned. So right now, let's get into my review of Bumblebee. You got the touch! You got the power! So right off the bat, guys, one of the things that I've been outspoken about as a fan of the Transformers films, uh, and, and an even bigger fan of the source material, is that you got to take this back to the 80s. You have to do it a hard reboot. Give us those G1 designs, and for the love of God, show us what happened on Cybertron to cause this mess. And guys, I can tell you, Everything that I just said was put inside of this film with the greatest of care. Gone are the days of overbloated action set pieces in the Bayformers. Gone are the days where they had lazy writing and inconsistencies in every film. Because guys, even though this has callbacks to certain elements of the first five films in the series, this is by no means connected. This is a totally different timeline slash universe, whatever you want to call it. And this is the direction we need as G1 fans, hands down. Big ups to this because you recasted the main character. You got Haley Steinfeld in here, which not that there were huge shoes to fill by, you know, Shia LaBeouf, but she did a wonderful job. And you had John Cena in here as kind of one of the supporting characters. And he's a leader of Sector 7. Yes, Sector 7 is in this. They're not as hokey and as weird. They're not a men in black type. They're more of a militaristic type of uh, program in this film, which I enjoyed again. Now, the thing is with this film, guys, like I said, this is the film that we wanted. And I shit you not, within the first 10 minutes of this film, a tear rolled down my eye. Because the film opens up in the midst of the Battle of Cybertron, as everything's going crazy. We're seeing the Decepticons. We're seeing so many lovely... Oh my god, I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about it. We saw all the all the fan favorite, all the original team members of the original G1 Autobots right on... In the first, in the first five to ten seconds of the film, you see all of them. You see... Uh, I think it was Ratchet. Yep, it was Ratchet. You see RC, you see Wheeljack, you see Optimus, Bumblebee, you, oh my god, I, I can't even speak. You see Brawn and Ironhide, the original design of Ironhide. You see everybody, guys. If you love the Transformers in the first five, ten minutes, you're already going to be happy. Then you see Soundwave, Shockwave. You're seeing all of them designed as they were on Cybertron. And the lovely part about this is... The way that the robots are, it's a mixing, it's the perfect match of the films that Michael Bay did. It's a perfect match, uh, an amalgamation of that G1 and the Fall and War for Cybertron video games, which I thought up to this point had been the greatest adaptation contemporary-wise for those things. And guys, it, it looks so beautiful and gorgeous, and just that alone makes this film worthwhile. But once they get off of Cybertron, they take it to 1980s. Uh, Americana in California and everything, I believe. And uh, San Diego, I think, is where it is specifically. It is a straight homage to E.T. because what happens is Bumblebee comes to Earth and within the first five minutes there's another great action sequence and we, he runs into John Cena and everything like that. And I'm not giving you the play-by-play -play -play necessarily, but what, what happens is uh, Bumblebee loses his memory and he's found up and fixed up by Haley Steinfeld's character, Charlie, who's gone through some troubles. She's lost her father and everything uh, going on for a while now. She's just turned 18, and as a birthday gift, her local mechanic decides to give her gift her this car because it's been just sitting and being a pile of junk. Unknown to her, this car is actually Bumblebee and will become one of her best friends. Throughout the course of the film, Bumblebee actually rediscovers his purpose. Uh, everything comes back to him. Um, they did, again, fantastic job on the story. Made you feel something for... Uh, Charlie uh, her, and Haley Steinfeld's character, that is. And 
you know, from what I heard, they had uh, a couple different drafts, and one of the drafts was done, I think, from uh, the the woman who wrote uh, *The Edge of Seventeen, which is the was one of Haley Steinfeld's most popular recent films that was done and was praised for the fact that it really hit the uh, nail on the head as far as adolescence and kind of going through all that stuff. And guys, that translates very well to the screen here, and it makes you kind of uh, feel like you're in Charlie's shoes as as she's kind of going through all these things. I have to say, a little bit goes a long way. And you know, in the Bay films, uh, they went over the top all the time. They even had Optimus Prime ripping people's faces off. Now, just to be honest here, uh, there was some things in this that were still kind of uh, crazy and violent, but not to the extent that I saw of Optimus Prime literally tearing a uh, Decepticon's face in splitting it with all blood gushing and everything. That was some cannibalistic stuff. Again, if these weren't robots, there'd be a problem here. They toned down the violence just a little bit, just just enough where it's it has an impact, but it also is not overly adult and everything as I had felt in the past with, with the uh, previous Bay films. And again, like I alluded to kind of earlier on in the village video, there are callbacks to the previous films. There is Sector 7. Agent Simmons is in Sector 7 still, but he's not the leader, and he's actually a young guy with kind of a fro going on. So they could definitely interweave some things, but this right here, retcons Bumblebee being in on the planet Earth in World War II times and all that stuff. We didn't need that garbage. Optimus Prime at the end of the film is on the planet, and at the end credit scene, you're seeing the other uh autobots coming and everything so this is the new direction this is a soft reboot and i hope that they go forward with this because it's just going to be a whole lot better because again we have all the designs we have all the designs and all the aesthetics there for the makings of a more consistent more faithful adaptation and so far as far as i'm concerned this is the best greatest transformers film ever going forward what would i like to see i'd like to see um, exactly what we saw in this film, but more robot battles. But uh, overall, guys, I highly recommend seeing this. If you are a G1 fan, you better get to the theaters before this is out because this is the movie you've been waiting for. I know I'm talking it up a lot, so the hype might be real uh, or you might fall short for you depending on what your expectations are. But guys, this film is easily easily worth your time definitely a good christmas movie for you and your family usually this type of movie would be coming out in the summer but it's not um and fun fact this film is actually the least as far as budget and everything this one has the lowest budget out of all the transformers films and i hope that this one does the most as far as uh you know uh, making blockbuster money because this one is is gorgeous it looks great it's not hard to follow what's going on in the story both thematically and visually, and it's just a wonderful time. Definitely take your kids if they're fans of the Transformers, and honestly, guys, yeah, this is this is what we needed. It's exactly what we needed for this series, and uh, yeah, I'm just I'm I'm happy to be saying that we're going to be getting a, a more consistent and more awesome version of the Transformers here on out. But anyway, guys, it's time for me to call it quits. I got to get out of here to make my quota and to see all my loved ones. So. Take care, guys, and to you and yours, a happy holidays and a Merry Christmas. Bye.